Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Now I Know. This one is quite special because one of the most common questions that I've been getting since this channel even started was about internal medicine and cardiology in Sweden. And here we have truth behold, one of the best people to answer this kind of questions. When, someone that I have to be uh, uh, really truthful and say, in my opinion, is one of the best doctors for where they are right now in their career. My good friend and the person that got me to come to Sweden, Dr. Mohammed Munir. Thank you. So Dr. Munir is uh, not only already finished with his internal medicine specialty, but as well doing his subspecialty in cardiology. And he has a lot to say, a lot to tell us. Thank you a lot for your time here, bro. Thank you. And uh, how about you let us know a bit about yourself? I'm a resident in uh, cardiology at mm -hmm. this moment. And uh, I think I've got around two, less than two years left to become a full cardiologist. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been doing internal medicine residency mm -hmm. and uh, that took around five years uh, exactly mm -hmm. from beginning until I sent my paper to what we call here in Sweden, social students and yeah, the national, it's the national board of health and welfare. Uh, they give you the license. Basically. Exactly. Um, and as you know, I started with you and I graduated the same year as you. So what, what, what I did was, um, uh, I wasn't sure of becoming internal medicine, but I knew that I wanted to be a cardiologist and interventional cardiologist uh, in this case. And, uh, what we, what I did was actually, I didn't start, uh, my residency straight away, which is possible to do here in Sweden. Okay, so you're able to start, you mean your cardiology residency or your internal medicine residency? You can do both of them, actually. Uh, after 2015, uh, the then they changed the, the whole residency program here in Sweden so that you're able to do, let's say, endocrinology or pulmonology or uh, gastroenterology without doing uh, the internal me medical residency. Oh, wow. So uh, you're able to become a cardiologist, uh, which is actually specialist in only cardiology mm -hmm. uh, in five years without having An internal the medicine. need of, of doing internal medicine. Okay. Then uh, then that begs the question, why why would someone choose to start with internal, like such as yourself, yeah. you choose to start with internal first? It depends because not every hospital have cardiology as... Uh, as a single specialty, mm -hmm. uh, mostly the, the the university hospitals they have that because usually, as as we know, that university university hospitals they have uh, a bit of of higher specialist care, mm -hmm. uh, let's say pacemaker doctors or uh, ablation doctors. Mm -hmm. uh, for that, maybe they they need a doctor which needs to be a specialist and especially a higher specialist in a, in a quicker time so okay. so instead of, of of having a doctor doing five years of internal medicine and then two and a half years of cardio and then afterward four years of, of something else mm -hmm. then they save it up to six years okay uh, and then somebody becomes yeah the, the subspecialist okay as a subspecialist let's say you said you finish now internal medicine right yeah and when you want to do cardiology, yeah. how long is it so you're considered as a now a cardiology specialist? Is it also another five years? No. So uh, in Sweden, you have to do at least a minimum of five years uh, of working under supervision. Okay. And uh, during those five years, then you have to have uh, some kind of goals. We, we call it målbeskrivning out. Mm -hmm. Like and, milestones and that you have to achieve. Exactly. So, so you have to achieve them uh, by, I uh, by working, having some research, and also by by doing some courses. Okay. And uh, after five years, then you you collect all your papers and then you send them in. Okay. Uh, and for internal medicine, it's the same thing. For cardiology, like only cardiology, it's the same thing. Okay. But if you want to do internal medicine and then a subspeciality in cardiology, mm -hmm. then you, you have to do five years of internal medicine. Okay. And the minimum of two and a half years of cardiology. 
Two and so two and a half years of yeah, videos. minimum. A minimum. Yeah. And what what decides this minimum? Is it your workplace that decides it, or the faster you reach these milestones, you have to reach the milestones, and okay. you have to do all the courses, and you have to do a clinical uh, like rotation. Or yeah, something. yeah, all the rotation okay. and all that. And the ones who decided is actually uh, your supervisor. Oh, that was my your, next question. Your, your actually, boss. Yeah. yeah. So that's really good. Another question that I get, is it very competitive to start directly in cardiology? Well, cardiology is a specialty that is very popular mm -hmm. around the whole world. And uh, usually it is. Uh, I, okay. I would say it's, it, it is because it's not a specialty where, where there are less doctors than needed. Yeah. It's, it's a very balanced uh, specialty. And uh, that's why when, when, when a lot of people like apply to cardiology, then the, the, the workplace okay. usually picks the doctors that they want to educate or specialize. As a, as a foreigner yeah. that is coming to Sweden, that has learned the language, did a bit of internship and wants to start, sometimes, from what I hear from the viewers as well, is that they're usually recommended to start in a board central or a family clinic. Yeah gain some experience, and mm -hmm. then to apply to the heavy-duty internal medicine uh, rotations or specialties or something else. Do you think that that's as well a good thing? Or should they focus more on trying to find internal medicine from the from the get-go? Uh, I would do say, you think it will help? I would say I what I did uh, while I was waiting for the license, uh, I actually worked at a voice central. Mm -hmm. which is uh, primary health care mm -hmm. for six months. And uh, during those six months, I had a supervisor. So so I had that time included in my residency. Oh, so they included that time. Yeah, so they included That's it. That's really good. Uh, but nowadays, uh, the system now has changed. So everybody that comes to Sweden, they have to do something called BT. Yeah. Uh, Betjänst. And uh, just like an internship as a preparatory internship before you actually start your specialty. Exactly. So nowadays you don't have a choice. So yeah. you have to do a BT. And yeah. for that, I would still say that it's much better if you know that you want to become, let's say, a cardiologist mm -hmm. or in telemedicine or whatever specialty, mm -hmm. it's always better to, uh, to, to apply straight away to the workplace that you want to work at. Yeah. And uh, the best way to do it is not by waiting but by actually emailing the workplace straight away. Exactly. That's like the, and that's that what is, we always talk about. That that's is like trick. tips number one. That's like yeah. the only trick that a lot of people, uh, especially not working in Sweden, uh, don't know about. And uh, I mean, it's always good to start somewhere. Uh, it's, it's, it's never bad to have your first job. It's like having your first car. Uh, that's a good way to put it. But I would say if you want a BMW and mm -hmm. you have the money to buy a BMW then mm -hmm. why you should buy a Mazda mm -hmm. so that's why I would say just uh, go for it <laughs> you just apply for the work you need and for the job yeah. you want and uh, uh, and that, that would be the best thing and a lot of us uh, because we we don't have we, we haven't worked in Sweden before and and usually we don't know those tips mm. uh, since before that you can actually apply to the job you want to before they announced that they need somebody to work for them. Uh, that's, I think, an opportunity that a lot of people miss. And that's why a lot of people actually ends up on a vote central and not ends up where they actually want to work. We, we talked about this uh, before, and I think this is, would you say this is tip number one? Yeah, I think if somebody told me to apply for cardiology to the, to the I mean, clinic, chef of the cardiology clinic then mm -hmm. i would have done that before even graduate wow uh, instead of, of, very of, uh, of you know going through uh, six months of working somewhere where i actually learned a lot and and yeah. that was very valuable but i mean it depends what kind of goal you have what would you say uh, is your tip for people applying, would you would you recommend applying to internal medicine first? Is it would it be easier to get an internal medicine uh, placement? Yeah, I think getting an internal medicine placement is much easier than getting uh, only cardiology. Mm -hmm. uh, but it depends what kind of goal you have. If you want to work in on a 
on a university hospital, mm -hmm. then of course you can become a both internal medical doctor and also an, uh, a cardiologist. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're gonna work out on a smaller hospital or uh, what we call like regional, yeah, or lands like usually uh, regional hospital, yeah, it depends on on the size of a hospital. Yeah, if uh, if if you want to work with a bigger hospital and you know that you want to be a sub specialized, and let's say a pacemaker then i would say go for cardiology uh, but if you want to have um let's say the ability to work everywhere in any hospital uh plus to have a double specialist yeah uh, like usually a lot of people say you know double board certified doctor sort of, blah yeah. blah a double specialist. i mean yeah, yeah exactly i mean yeah. if if you like that then then go for both of them and for me i at the beginning, I was more of, of, of getting only cardiology. I was very, very uh, aggressively thinking on only getting cardiology. But then I noticed that if you have internal medicine, mm -hmm. then you will treat your cardiology patients in a different way. Then you will think outside the box. This is a very you good will, point. You will, you will treat like the patient as a human being, not, not, not only just a heart the disease. patient. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And usually the, the cardio patients, they uh, they always have something else. Another comorbidity uh, or something yeah, like this. Like liver problem, yeah. nephro yeah. problem. And you will be responsible for that ultimately. Exactly. If they're your patient. Yeah. So so yeah. I would say, I mean, there is there is no wrong or, or right answer. It's just what is right for you. Yeah. Uh, so for me, getting an internal medical speciality and then on top of that cardiologist so yeah that was the right thing uh, and the best thing is is if if let's say one day you change your mind and you want to become an endocrinologist then you just add two and a half years exactly exactly uh, so you can just you know top up so you when you basically from what i understand from you is that by getting your specialty in internal medicine you're basically opening up so many different bridges for yourself exactly. and doors not just one yep. as in cardiology yep. Then the next question, which also I've gotten a lot, how would you find the work-life balance to be working in internal medicine? Because we know internal medicine is <laughs> a hard job, like you're dealing with everything all at once. I mean, if you if you don't like working during the nights, if you don't like taking responsibilities, if you don't like uh, quick decisions, mm -hmm. uh, if you don't like uh, to think outside the box, as I said before, uh, become an ophthalmologist if you don't like yeah, all exactly that, <laughs> i mean it's it's um i had a friend who told me that that if you become internist then you get all the patient's problems at once yeah uh, and you're getting on top of that all other doctors and specialties at once which means if the patient comes in and it's not a surgical patient and they're not going to operate it it's then yours. it's going to become an internal medicine patient so uh it depends. I mean, if yeah. if you not like to work during the night, if you don't like to spend a lot of your time at hospital, yeah, then I would advise to do something else and not uh, yeah. at all internal medicine. Do you do you find though, even with all that hard work of internal medicine, yeah. that you still get enough time for your family, for yourself, for your rest, or is it an overload? Like in some other countries, you hear that they work eighty plus hours a week in in, in internal medicine. Is it similar to this here? I mean, in Sweden, we try to not work uh, as much as possible, as you know. <laughs> Everybody needs to take their uh, their vacation yeah. and all that. But of course, when you work in internal medicine, which is actually I see it as a as a positive gr thing yeah. here. Yeah. That is, when you do your shifts, yeah. then you get something called hurkomp timar, which is basically the time off uh, that you can take out either as money. Or oh, okay. as a time off like from a the hospital, compensation time. Exactly, it's it's mm. basically compensation time. Uh, and for me, that was the best thing because I would be at home without using my vacation time and still be free. Uh, and of course, the cost of that is being in the hospital, uh, working night shifts, and uh, yeah. Uh, and yeah, you have to 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 study and yeah. try to to learn as much as possible. So in short, like in the best case scenario, if somebody started today on their pathway to become a cardiologist, yeah. you're talking seven to eight years before they're done. 
I would say it's five years if they want to only become only a cardiologist. cardiologist. Yeah. But if they want to be a doctor where they can work in every hospital and yeah. and, and even in, as an internal medical doctor, uh, which yeah. is an internist, then you can still work at a primary care yeah. healthcare, and uh, that's that's a positive thing. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the best thing is that as a doctor, then you be more confident in uh, in the different differential diagnosis uh, than so cool. only a cardiologist but on 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 top of that you'll work more you'll have longer time to become a cardiologist uh, and maybe you're not becoming the best cardiologist because you're not only working in five years in only cardiology yeah. but I would say since it's a, in a medical field then the more you study the more the exactly. better you become exactly when you apply it in practice right now you're starting cardiology yeah um, because you have your specialty in internal medicine mm. but you're doing another subspecialty in cardiology if does your salary stay as a as a resident salary or you start uh, gaining a specialist salary even though you're doing another subspecialty uh, no my salary actually changes to a specialist uh, salary so so yeah, that means exactly. I'm working as a I'm it's a bit complicated it's uh, I, I'm getting a salary as a specialist yeah but my contract is as a resident so I what see. I do is I go on all courses that is needed. Yeah. I do everything as a normal resident do. Yeah. Uh, except I get a higher salary. A higher salary. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of the best of both worlds. Exactly. <laughs> kind of the so, best so, of both so you're not losing a lot. No. You only. That's you know, really good. Getting a lot of benefits. And would would you say in cardiology? Because I've gotten this question as well. Do you get to do any invasive procedures such as PCI and things like that? in every cardiology subspecialty or it depends more on which hospital or... I think it depends on the hospital it depends on the hospital yeah. uh, right now I'm at the uh, Salgransk University Hospital and what we do is that we have uh, a placement in mm -hmm. our in our schedule mm -hmm. which allow us to be at uh, just called lab mm -hmm. uh, where you can be at the PCI lab or mm -hmm. ablation lab or the pacemaker lab mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you're there assisting uh, and of course you're learning while, while you assist uh, and, and to have the chance to actually try uh, to see how everything works yeah. and if there's if it is something for you. Uh, so, I, But when I had my internal medicine, uh, by that time uh, it wasn't really easy to get uh, no. an invasive placement so it depends on the hospital depends on the on the yeah on the supervisor it depends on you yeah and and That's even true. even if you don't have a placement in uh, on, on your schedule if you like something then you just go for it on your uh, spare time or when you have shifts how how often do you get night shifts or that changes a lot well i had my internal or as a cardiologist as, a, as, as both now that we're saying especially in um, internal medicine of course beginning at the beginning it was uh, more uh, shifts comparing to now uh, at the beginning you work a lot of at the emergency department yeah and as an internal medicine resident and that's because you have to learn the first step of a treatment yeah and uh, the, the emergency uh, situations and I think I worked as a we call it primar khur, which is you are like the first base, the first line of the first defense. line of defense, <laughs> exactly. Uh, two years, and then the last years I worked as a. It's almost as a consultant, so I'm the yeah. one who's taking care of the alarms and the emergency department. I'm yeah. the one who answers all the phone from the ambulance the departments, okay. uh, the nurses, the doctors, the... This is so different from healthcare. what we do in ophthalmology. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, so it's a bit yeah, You different. guys have real, real jobs. <laughs> no, I don't know yet. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit different. But again, it's, uh, it's not like you, you take a big jump from nothing to, yeah. to, to, uh, to getting that responsibility but it's it's step by step and uh, at the end you, you're just gonna feel confident in your position uh, so I would say at the beginning I had in uh, in a scheduled period of three months I had 
two night shifts of weeks, mm -hmm. which is uh, three nights in a week. Okay. Uh, four, four weekends. Uh, and that means one of them, it's, it's a night shift and then three other daytime shifts. And then uh, one to two daytime shifts at the emergency department. Plus, that's a lot of work. Uh, plus, a shift that is usually from uh, four o'clock to eight o'clock p.m. So yeah. Yeah, guys. There's a. I mean, if this is what you really, you yeah. really want, <laughs> this is the work they have to put for exactly. it. Exactly. But that leads us to the final kind of questions. Um, what? What would you say are the biggest advantages of being an internal medicine specialist and a cardiologist in Sweden, like here, for someone that is interested in it? And just a couple of points. In, especially in Sweden. Mm. I mean, first, first thing first is you're going to be a master of ECG. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you're going to be a doctor where you can just differentiate everything. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to still have if you have a problem, let's say your problem with diabetes mm -hmm. and you have difficulty of solving it, then you still have somebody who can actually help you out. Yeah. Uh, the salary as a hospital specialist, it's almost equally uh, in between the yeah. specialties. Yeah. Uh, but I would say you will have uh, a residency and of course, it depends on the hospital, but a residency where you're going to learn a lot, you're going to work a lot, you're going to have a lot of responsibilities. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, you're going to feel, uh, I mean, almost as Dr. House feels like. This so, is amazing. Yeah. This is amazing. And the last, last question, would you recommend in terms of psychology to everyone? Uh, no, I wouldn't, to be honest. That's a, it's a, it's uh, an interesting answer. Because... If I would say yes, I would recommend it to everybody, then uh, I would be lying. Because uh, I've seen my colleagues, I have a lot of colleagues where they, uh, where they manage to, to, to do their residency, they manage to do the work job, yeah. they, they, they see it as something fun. Yeah. And I've seen people coming in and try to make it, but it's been just a heavy workload and yeah. they feel very stressed out because of the, you yeah. know, uh, they have to to answer very quick. They have to take quick decisions. They have to take a lot of responsibilities yeah. in a very broad field. So I would say it depends on, on what kind of person you are. Yeah, and that's okay. And that's okay. I mean, that's why we have different specialties, exactly. and we need doctors in all the different specialties. Exactly. I really want to thank you. Thank for you for this great time. Thank you for your time. And no, thank you for for, for people that that really don't know, he uh, he is one of the nicest. Uh, kindest doctors I've ever met, uh, and uh, <laughs> no, I, I'm sure I'm sure patient satisfaction is is really through the roof. I'm not just saying that. He was always, from what I've known him, so ethical and so straightforward and very pure-hearted. Sorry, we're doing it in the car, but yeah. we didn't find a better location <laughs> without without wind. You can catch this episode as well on um, the Now I Know podcast. And if you have any questions for uh, Dr. Muhammad, um, we we'll either link his email or. You can send it straight to me and I will ask him and get back to you guys. Of course. Um, best of luck. Thank you. you I hope too. I will never need you. I hope so too. <laughs> and I hope you never, you will never need you. Yeah, never I hope I me. never need you either. Subscribe and share so others can benefit. And this guy is the best. You know it by now already. Now you. I know. Oh, you know. I know, uh, I know. <laughs>